Morning. So today we're going to talk about springtime. Spring is finally approaching. We're starting to get some warmer weather in here, but you're going to face some issues. You're going to have some problems and I'm just going to try go over a few things to get you on track. And we'll talk a little bit about the new property, the new farm per property that we purchased. So hold on. If you do not have the lawn guides, get the lawn guides because the lawn guides have calendars, they have product links, and they have discussions on everything that you might need through the entire year. Cool season, warm season, zoysia, Bermuda, it's all there. So go to freelawncareguide.com. Uh, you can click the QR code. And when you get there, there's no app, there's no email sign up, just bookmark it or save it on your phone so you can go back to it anytime you want. When you have a question, just pull it up and go to it. Aerating, fertilizing, I've got army worms, whatever it is, use them. We had, uh, when was it, about two weeks ago, we had a brutal cold front move in. We got down to 21 degrees the first night, and then we got down to 29 degrees the second night, and the lawn was already starting to green up, and guess what? Boom. It pretty much burned it out. Then after that, we had tons of rain, and I mean tons of rain. We had rain and rain and rain. Uh, so a lot of you guys are in that same situation. Now we're in Georgia, it might be a little bit different. So our lawn, our Bermuda lawn here got set back again. So it's kind of like we're restarting this whole process. But we've done our Jumpstart program. If you don't know what the Jumpstart program is, learn about it, it's in the guide. We've done the Jumpstart, we've put out our pre-emergent, we're all set, we're just gonna sit back and let mother nature at this point do her stuff. We need the temperature. Soil temperature determines when your lawn wakes up, not fertilizer. Let's get that point straight. So I'm not putting down any long-term fertilizer here. Now, let's move a little bit south down to the beach house and I wanna show you the zoysia lawn down there. The zoysia lawn, so I have a lawn care guy down there. Uh, he's just a one-man show, he's really good. He works with me, does whatever I need. Uh, he was out there and he said, yep, you're right. I'm going to have to start cutting this stuff every week. So we're back to weekly schedule with him because the lawn looks beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Now this is zoysia from seed that we planted at the beach house. Now he did send me a picture and he said, hey, what's this? What are these two circles on your lawn? And uh, he sent me pictures of them. Let me put it up. And it's actually a fungus. So a lot of people, you'll see this, whether it's a brown patch, whatever it is, you get this brown circle and that's a fungus that's moved in. So I told him, I went on Amazon and I went to, on the page, I linked to this in the description below, I linked to this, the granular fungicide. I said, I'm gonna ship this down there and I want you to hand sprinkle those two circles and then treat the rest of the yard normal. So he's gonna do that for me. Now we have bad old brown patch. Ever since we bought this property, this front yard has suffered from brown patch. I don't know what it is. It's just a crazy area. So I'm getting ready probably next week. I'll probably hit uh, the front with uh, some of the granular fungicide as well. It generally knocks it back and handles it pretty well. So those are issues that we're going to have to deal with. And if you have the lawn guides, I talk about that. I talk about those and I show you the different funguses that you can use in the product to cure them. So get the guides. What am I doing? So if you're in the same situation we're in where you've had that setback period, don't worry about it. Um, once the temperatures warm up, I'll come down and I'll start hitting with some green shocker until the lawn looks perfectly green and then I'll switch over to my long-term slow release fertilizer. Now is not the time for long-term slow release fertilizer. Now the zoysia lawn, we grew that whole lawn pretty much on green shocker. Um, we kept hitting with green shocker, hitting with green shocker and then once it got up green and looked absolutely gorgeous. I switched over to PGF 1608. Now down there we have high phosphorus. Here we have low phosphorus. So that's why we put down in our Jumpstart program, we put down the 101010 to get that phosphorus level up a little bit. So that's kind of where we are with our lawns right now. So it's gonna vary based on your temperature zones in your part of the country. So one, one pill does not fix all diseases here or all cures all problems. So if you've had a setback, just sit back and relax, don't worry about it. If you've had a ton of rain, sit back, don't worry about it. Just let, the, let nature take its course and it'll deal with it. 
So one thing that's cool over on the property over there, we're getting ready to do, one thing that's good about this setback is it's given us two weeks where we've been able to go over and work on this, uh, the new farm property, the disaster ranch. <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of background on this. We've been searching, gosh, for over a year uh, for a sort of a farm property with more acreage that wasn't far away from our house. The problem is, is when you find a nice piece of property like this, you know, you're looking at 20, 30, 40 acres, you generally have to drive, you know, an hour and a half away from a populated area to get it. Well, this was a unique situation in that the person that owned this property passed away, nice gentleman, passed away, went to the estate, and they put it up for only a 10-day period, and they took all the bids, and we won the bid on it. It's a disaster. There's junk everywhere in this property. There are brush piles everywhere in this property. The house, the house has just junk and clothes and everything piled all in it. So we have some general contractors coming in to see if we can save the house. It was built in the 80s. Um, I think we can do that. I don't think we're gonna have to tear it down and rebuild, but we do know we have some immediate problems over there. So the pond, when you build a pond, you build a big berm. This has a massive berm that's probably 40, 50 years old. Well, you install a drain pipe, so when that pond fills up, the excess water goes out the drain pipe, shoots under the berm, and your pond doesn't over flood. Ooh, it's raining out here. We're gonna get some storms today again. So that main pipe has rusted out and we had to have, it's not an easy process. They put a pipe, a little six inch pipe and they ran it like 18 feet under the berm. So we had to close off that berm, close off that pipe and dig out that entire berm section to get down to that pipe. And then we reinstalled a 15 inch pipe up higher, not going down and under, just sort of at level. It was a, it's an amazing process to watch. So we had that. Now the other thing we know right offhand is we got a lot of cleanup work. We've been doing a little bit of cleanup work over there, but I got to bring someone in to get some of these brush piles out of here. We got to get that upper field ready. Um, I really want to do some plantings up there. And what else? Uh, septic. So I had my septic guys come out and they looked at it. He looked at it and said, they're going to make you replace this. So we know we have to have a new septic and drain field put in behind the house. Uh, it has a well. It actually has a deep well like a real well. I mean, one of these big round things that's 20 feet deep. And he tested that he said, man, you got plenty of water here, tons of water. So he's testing that for bacteria. He's testing it for minerals and, and, and heavy metals and so forth. So we'll find out on that. I think the well will be okay. We'll have to get a water treatment system if we're gonna bring in that well water. But overall, I mean, the, the property itself has 10 acres on the front, which is former pasture will turn into sort of growing fields. The next 10 acres is a house that sits on an absolutely stunning three acre pond. It's gorgeous and that's the money of the whole property. Uh, the back behind the pond is another 20 acres. That's the most gorgeous woods you've ever seen. It's not flat, it's kind of rolling. It's just an absolutely gorgeous piece of property but the only, if this had a nice house sitting on it, it would be well over a million dollars for this property. But because it was a piece of crap, because the house looked like a disaster, it was full of trash, the property's full of trash and people are like, dude, I don't want to touch this thing. That's why we're able to get it. I mean, it's like 10 minutes from my house, which is amazing. Like I said, normally you have to drive an hour, hour and a half to find a property like this. So we're thrilled that we got it. The pond is, is gorgeous. Uh, matter of fact, the other day I was waiting for one of my contractors to show up out there and I sat there with a fishing rod just off the little dock that I has and I caught nine bass and six bluegill. And I mean, I'm talking about the, I caught a three pound bass, absolutely gorgeous stuff. <laughs> so we're really happy with that. So let's get back to the grass. So what am I doing now? I'm not doing anything right now. Once this rain starts, remember I warned you guys, when you put down any kind of treatment, whether it's a spray or anything that is supposed to go into the lawn quickly, what do you put it on? You always put that treatment on dry soil. So you never come out after a rain right away and put a treatment down. You have to wait. You need two to three days of good sunny weather. Let that soil dry out. Put your treatment down and then run your irrigation system and push it into the ground, push it into the ground. Once it's into the ground, it's locked in there and it's not going to run off. 
So when we use something like a green chalker, which is what we're going to be using for the next couple of weeks to get this lawn sort of coming up, we'll put down green chalker. I'll put it on down on a dry day and then I'll immediately water it in. Even if I have rain coming the next day, I'll actually go and water it in, water it in, water it in. So I know it's starting to get into that soil and there won't be any runoff. And that's, I've talked about this before. One of the beautiful things about green chalker is if you do it right, dry soil, put it down, wet it, wet it, wet it, you have zero runoff. Unlike a slow release fertilizer, that if you have three days of rain and it's heavy, you're going to have some runoff. Now, the same thing with pre emergent. If you're going to put down a pre emergent, dry soil, water it in right away. And that way, if a thunderstorm comes by, you don't have to worry about it washing away. Now, I do want to give you one product update. And this is interesting. It's a couple people have left some comments. Let's talk about Dirt Booster for a minute. Uh, Dirt Booster is a corn distillate product combined with Humichar, and we use it as a natural organic garden fertilizer. Well, we started testing it two years ago on lawns, and it can be used as an organic lawn treatment in the summertime. You can put it down, cool season guys, warm season guys, you can all put this down in the heat of the summer. It's great. Well, it came with a microbial pack. And the microbial pack, you mix with water and then you sprayed it on top. So it was a two step process. Well, I got talking to the guys at Anderson's, and, you know, they have like, you know, five PhDs working all the time on this stuff. And they've been doing this for months. And they are now making Dirt Booster an all in one, one step treatment, which means that all your micro boosting will actually already be in it. So all you do is it's gonna be a one step where you just put it out, you spread it on your lawn water it in and your microbes and your biochar, your humic acid, your organic corn matter and your micro booster are all in one application. That's going to be cool. Same thing with gardens. You won't have to mix it up. I'll have to update the website and do some update videos on it, but uh, it's just an all in one step process and that will be available. So Dirt Booster is sold out right now, just so you know, and probably it's going to be probably three or four weeks at least before that new version v2 comes out on the dirt booster i'm really excited about that this summer i'm going to be once we get off green shocker here um and we go to pgf complete once I, once my lawn is completely green i'll be going to pgf complete putting down my pgf complete and then when the summertime comes here because we've been putting down so much uh human char and biochar into the soil i don't have to put out a lot of fertilizer I'll just come out here with some Dirt Booster and treat Dirt Booster probably for a good six to eight weeks during the hot heat of the summer. I won't need much. If I want a little pop of green, I'll come out with some green chocolate. So that's kind of where I am. Uh, let me go ahead and maybe I'll put up some of the footage. I'll just, I'll just string some stuff together on the pond renovation and fixing it because it's raining again. I'm going out there. We are, um, we had the pond done. We had half of it has the place has a quarter mile long driveway it has a quarter mile long driveway and uh it has a turn that's kind of washing out so we put in a new pipe come here girl come in here come here she's walking out here in the rain it has a uh, a turn and so we had to dig that out yesterday and but i my son and i have to go back and finish it because we need to extend it we're gonna be putting in a drain system, a French drain system around the house because the crawl space is actually has some water seepage into it. So we'll be doing, I got a mini excavator coming. We'll actually be installing a drain system around the house. Uh, then I've got to find someone that has a good bush hog because I don't have a bush hog and bush hog that front field. I already went out and sprayed the fields uh, with a combination of glyco and final, final saw, final, final, final saw is it? I believe that's what it is. Final Saw is a, um, come here, honey. Final Saw is an organic soapy herbicide that kills everything, weeds, whatever, and it dehydrates it, but it's organic. So we're over there testing that product. It's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get this done. Howdy. So we got a pond fixing day. Pond fixing day. 15 inch pipe. That's a lot of pipe. And then we found a piece of steel pipe. We've got this natural spring running down here under the road and I'm losing my corner. So they're going to go up in the woods. They're going to grab that steel pipe and we're going to put that steel pipe in right about here. And then we're going to dig it through here and let it go over here because that's a natural creek that feeds a lake down further. 
So our concern was that we were going to have to drain the whole pond. And, and man, we got a bunch of fish. We got a bunch of fish we didn't want to kill. So they're up here. And what he's done is he's building a berm around the broken, rotted out pipe. You can see one of the sections of new pipe. This is a little compactor that they've got, trench compactor. So they built a berm up around that pipe. Good lord, man. Hey guys, so got a three acre pond here on the new property. And of course, right before closing on the property, the drainage pipe breaks, rusts out after 40, 50 years. So we're taking this skinny little six inch metal culvert pipe and we're, that goes way down under this berm. So the pipe goes way down under. We're filling all that in and we're just gonna use these massive 15 inch pipes to change into a creek back there. actually just a six inch and it's all rotten and was broken and dude this guy is sitting on the back of a cliff scaring the hell out of me and you can see how deep that is so to give you some perspective there's the berm and this is how deep they had to go to get that pipe out now that's that remote control little vibrating packer. And then he's down there in the excavator. And what we had to do, this was all rotted out. So we had to build a temporary berm right in here. Morning. So there's the, uh, the pond. There's the temporary berm they built in. Bad head. This is that new 15 inch pipe. Now, this pipe now runs up higher through the berm. It doesn't run down below. But man, that's, gosh, almost what, 60 feet of pipe? Now it goes out, there's a creek back there and there's huge boulders and now it pours into the boulders back there. Look at the size of that tree. So, here we go again, next day. <laughs> but you can see the size of this pipe. This is crazy. And I'll tell you what, one of the best investments I ever made was that <laughs> was that UTV gator from Lowe's. <clears throat> you don't know how tiring it is to own 40 acres till you gotta walk it all. So they did this guy is this guy on that dozer is fantastic. Now I've seen a lot of people work dozers, and this guy was hanging off a cliff. He just does really good smoothing, good feathering of the land. The pipe is angled perfectly. And uh, let me show you what we got here. All right, so there's the finished. So they seeded, put down hay straw, and 
I told them to leave that berm there just for the heck of it. We can fish here. <laughs> and that's the new pipe. Six inch versus 15 inch. And there's no way this place is flooding. So now that runs and then it runs down at an angle. But you can see he had to take a bunch of dirt out of there. Well, after he was done, he feathered it down into that creek perfectly. Great job. Then they put um, straw matting with seed here. They really did a good job. I'm impressed. And then I think you can see at the end of the straw, that's that 15 inch pipe. Now it used to hit that tree and he moved it over here so that'll hit the rocks. So this pond should fill back up and my fish should be happy. Matter of fact, this morning I came out, man, they were growing crazy. I caught 12 fish in 30 minutes and we caught the biggest bass so far. He was right at three pounds. Pitcher, pretty cool. That's how you put down gravel right there. So one of the good things about scavenging is we went walking up in the pasture and we found 14 inch pipe, which is about delivered close to $800 a piece. So they're not rusted out and we can fix our drainage problem down here. So you can see that this area all slopes down and there's a natural creek spring that runs here that runs all the time. So what we're doing, so went up in the woods and we found that piece of pipe. Again, if you had that thing delivered, it'd be probably 800 bucks delivered. That's like a 14 inch steel pipe. So what we're doing, he's digging out this bed here. And that culvert's gonna go down and he's gonna take it into the creek behind him. And he's gonna shoot it down in that creek. Pretty cool. Well, I think they caught me a king mackerel out here in this pond. It's a big one. <laughs> I don't know, he's probably what, two, three pounds? It's probably a two pounder. I can't get him up on this rod. I know. Four pound test. Four pound test and a little ultralight. I'm having to spool. I'm having to spool real careful on it. Just keep the camera on him in case he jumps off. There he is. He's coming in a little. Don't put too much pressure on him. Ah. <laughs> Man, Doc can catch them fish, baby. Yeah. That's what that green shocker will do for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice two, two and a half right there. Oh, dude, our first day out here on this pond. Hold on, I gotta He's take a picture. Fat. That's fun.